brothers and sisters, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I think the scripture said, Oh, magnify the Lord with us and let us recall his name together. It is an exhortation where we lift up God and, and everything that, that we're concerned about melts away in the power and the, in the presence of God. There is no trouble that can stand in the presence of God. There is no situation that can't that can stand in the presence of God. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We thank God this morning for allowing us to come together one more time. I pray that it is our resolve this morning that I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We can't have soul ties that cause us to be so tired of people that we miss God. I pray God that we will break every soul tie. That we can't get to get to the place where there's nobody but us and Jesus. And that everybody that we brings in our life. For the mighty God who serves. He's able to do anything but fail. And so I thank God for you this morning. I honor the Spirit of God and I just ask Him that He would have His way. As we prepare ourselves for our pulpit devotion, I want to ask Mr. Wheeler to read our scripture this morning. And I want to ask Evangelist Johnson that you will lead us to the throne of grace as we pray together. And we just give God the glory and the praise for all that He has done. We're going to ask our praise team if they will bless us with our open selection. Then we will have scripture and prayer. So let us just get into the things of God. I know it might be uh, a day that things have gone wrong, but God is still good and his mercy is everlasting. So we're going to sing, we're going to, we're going to pray in the name of the Lord. Whether there be a many or whether there be a few, we're going to give God the glory. And we're going to ask our brothers to come in, in, in song. And after then, we'll move in our pool and devotion.
here to go. Not my way. But let your way, your will, your will, your way be done. Amen. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 13. I already had something else picked out, Pastor. But then it came to this one, so I know it's the will of God. Because God is love. God is love. Jesus is a manifestation of the love of God. Amen. Amen. I'll give everybody time to get there. And please read with me. Let's begin. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity or love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity or love, it profit me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, and is not easily provoked, speak no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man mature, I put away childish things. But now we see things through a glass, darkly. But then face to face. Now I know in part. But then I shall know even as I also am known. And now abide with faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity, a love. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Father, we come now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another day. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather in your house one more time. Oh, Heavenly Father, and while we're here, we want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that's through your name. Oh, Heavenly Father, we want to see you high and lifted up and let your train fill the temple so that there's none of us but all of you, Lord, out here today. Oh, Heavenly Father, because we know where you fill the temple, Lord God. There's healing, there's deliverance, Lord God.
scripture read, First Corinthians 13, let us know that everything is based on love. Amen. And if it's done outside the rule of love, then it was just a waste of time because God is love. Everything God for the love of God through the prayer, standing in the gap and praying through the situations that are going on. Then the praise team come back and asking the Lord to do it for me, to fix it for me. Because he's a great problem solver. If he can't do it, he can't be done. Amen. So we thank God for his love and his grace and his goodness toward us. At this time, we're going to give way to our praise team. They already fired up. We just want them to keep on rolling. Amen. They're going to bless us in song selection, selection. I don't know how many it is, but after they finish their song selections, uh, we thank God that we have a woman of God that's going to preach the word of God this morning. Uh, we thank God for accepted to stand in this place this morning and declare the truth to the people of God. And we thank God for her. Thank you. It is a blessing to be able to have ministers that you can trust and to step in yeah. and yeah. help take the load because I can't tell it all even if I wanted to. I, I, sometimes I want to tell it all but it's good for somebody else to give another perspective on it. Amen. Because I'm learning, I'm learning more and more as a, more as a preacher and as a pastor that sometimes people, you can preach something and you know what you said but then somebody else can come back and preach the same word and it's almost like you ain't never heard it before. Amen. But it's all right. As long as the word gets there, and as long as, you get, as, long as the change comes, then I'm, I'm all right. Here. And ain't no, ain't, ain't, no, ain't no hate, ain't no telephone in my body. I just thank God that the word of God will come forward. So at this time, our praise team is going to bless us in song selection. And we thank God for everybody here. But we want you to receive uh, the blessings of the Lord. Don't, don't just listen to the song. Let's get involved and put ourselves in the, in the message of the songs that are coming. Yeah. And if you know the song, I don't think the men will be mad if you help them sing. Yeah. Yeah. Even out of tune if you need to. It's all right. We're going to give praise to God.
because he is the one who tears them down. So I said in my ear to me, he's telling me and you, it's time to face those mountains and let him tear them down. Because he is the almighty God. That's what I hear in my ear. Thank you, Lord. Give an honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank God for this opportunity to pass the pit. And the minister and staff, I give honor to his wife, Mrs. Pittman, the minister wives, the congregation, the musicians, and I give honor to the men of God who sings, who sings, and lets me know that they truly know. And I just thank God for them. I thank God that there are examples that need to be shining out more. Because they know them. Sometimes we think that, we as women think that the men don't hurt, but I ran into a young man, uh, he's a nurse, and he was talking with me and I was telling him about the boys and my struggles and he said, be patient with them because you know, men hurt too. All right. So I just thank God for him bringing that to me. That even though they can stand strong, and they do, we have to remember that they have feelings just like me. So they can hurt too. And I see God in these men in this church. From the oldest to the youngest, I see God in them. So I give on God the honor, the glory, and the praise for the men of God. Thank you, Lord. I won't be I want to go in the book of Psalms 3. And I'm going to read verses 3, 4, and 5. And will you stand for the reading of God's word? He was bruised 
for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God provides. Colossians 2, 7. I'm going to do 7 and 10. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, yes. Yes. as ye, which means you, yes. Yes. have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Colossians 2, 10, and ye, which is you, are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. Yes. Rooted. Rooted. Yes. And when he gave me this, he's talking to believers. You're rooted yes. in him. You're the ones that are rooted yes. in him. So God gave me this story. And I've been trying to figure out where he's going with it, but he gave it to me. All right. And he's talking to me about hurts and pains. Or wounds that are covered up and even though you're laughing, you're smiling on the outside, My God. you are deeply wounded yes. on the inside. Yes. My God. My God. And only the power of the Holy Spirit can heal what is deeply hurting oh, and hindering your inward healing of these deep cuts and bruises of life battle scars. Yeah, all right. yeah. Yeah. And he kept saying, dig deeper. dig deeper. It doesn't matter what we're going through. Those hurts and pains are caused by things that have happened in our lives yes. by Life's battle scars. Whatever we run into, it starts with us from a child and it grows in us. And some of us, we're holding it in. And even though we're pretending that we're happy and we're joyous, but he sees deep down inside of us that there's some deep hurts and pains and there are wounds and scars that are embedded inside of us yes. that need to be healed yes. in order for him to do what he needs to do with us yes. that we can become whole and complete in My him. God. And there are times that we carry these hurts and pains and when we're acting out, saying things that shouldn't be said, doing yes. things that we shouldn't do, yes that it's because of those embedded hurts, those pains. And I thought about heartaches Jesus. and shames. Yes. Heartaches that comes from being neglected, Jesus. being insulted, being offended, Jesus. being looked over. And, you know, he showed me that you need love and forgiveness towards God to be able to be healed on the inside. My Lord, I hear you. 
I'm saying, well, God didn't do all these hurts to me. People. Yes. People did a lot of the hurts to you. But then, who do we blame? We blame God. Right. We blame God for every little thing that doesn't go right because we prayed one way and he did it another oh, way. Right. And so when he does it his way, we're angry and we're bitter, but, but even though we're, we're trying to stand up like we're strong, Deep inside, we're angry and bitter with God. Yes. 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 But God did it the right way. Yes. So he had to show me these things in my life. Yes. And I'm sure he's showing you these things yes. in your life. Yes. Yes. Sometimes though, these wounds take longer to heal. And it's forgiveness is the worst one because... It's not easy to forgive when you're hurting. You might say, oh, I forgive you, but do you really mean it? Are you really sincere about it? That one thing is holding you back from being whole, being prosperous, being blessed of God. Because you're really blaming God. God forgave us for our sins. So why can't we forgive others? Amen. And then you have to really understand that it's him that you need to forgive. My God. Everything you wanted and you didn't get it, it failed. You're angry, but you're taking it out on others. But you're really blaming God. So when you ask God for forgiveness, you have to forgive him and you have to love him because God is truly a loving God. And he's not going to give you everything that you want until he knows that you're ready to handle it. You know, we as parents, our kids want, want, want. And if you grew up like I did, you didn't get everything you wanted. But as you grew up, you realize that Mom and daddy did the right thing. Yes. Because if you can't accept not having everything, you're headed for trouble in the world, and that's what the enemy wants. Yes. Yes. He, he wants you to get in trouble, you end up in prison, you end up somebody hurting you, because you feel like, I want it, I can take it. Yes. Right. If they allow you to do it at home, no. no. Right. Because when you go out in the world and do it, Sometimes mom and daddy can't come to your rescue. So he's saying, then they want to blame God. You have to be able to forgive him and you have to love him unconditionally. That means you have to put him first in everything that you do. Everything. When you wake up in the morning, if, even before you put your feet on the floor. When you open your eyes, you should say, thank you, Lord. Because you're able to open your eyes because somebody didn't wake up. Somebody doesn't even Somebody doesn't even know their names in the morning or where they are in the morning. So when you are able to do that, you should thank God for that. You should thank him. He's, he's telling us it takes a little longer to heal inside. Yes. And that's even if you have surgery. You're going to heal on the outside quicker yes. than on the inside. Yes. And if you're not going to do what the doctor tells you to do, if he tells you take it easy, and you, oh, I feel good, and you want to run out there and do everything you were doing, then you're going to have complications. Yes. Then you're going to blame the spouse, the children, the doctor, everybody but yourself. So you have to be able to say, you know what, Lord, I need to forgive myself for not listening. Because I didn't listen to you. I didn't listen to the doctor. I thought I felt well, and now here I am, back in the hospital, going back in another uh, incision. And that's going to take more time for me to heal. When he tells you to rest, you should rest. When he tells you don't go there, don't go there. Yeah. But no, I know that can't be God. 
then go and then when something happens, you ready to yes. oh now why didn't you remind why didn't you steer me this way? Why didn't you stop me? No, he warned you, uh -huh. don't go, don't yes. do that. Yes. Just like our parents do. Yes. Our parents did that to us. Yes, Everything that they taught us, and those who grew up in the church, whose parents grew you up in the church talking to you about God, you didn't want to listen then. But now you want to listen. Uh -huh. yeah. And that's good that you want to listen because some don't. Yeah. They still don't. True. So you have, to, you have to forgive God and forgive yourself. Yeah. Forgive yourself that you messed up. Admit it. I messed up. Forgive me. And he's right there to forgive you. He's right there to instruct you. He's right there to keep you and lead you in the right direction. Success does not come easy, but if you know the Lord, He'll walk you right through it. Yes, He'll walk you right through it. You never want for anything. You never want for anything. Even though you think you do, what you wanted, really, you really didn't need it. It's just something that everybody else has. So He showed me He wants the church to start being the example for the world. Because we've gotten to the place that the world is the example for the church. Hallelujah. The world is out there making the church a mockery. The church gotten away from God. But he showed me that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. He was bruised yes. for our iniquity. Yes. The chastisement of our peace yes. was upon him and with his stripes, yes. because of his stripes and what he bare, yes. we have peace with God. We're healed. He was pierced through for our sins, bruised utterly and crushed. Yes, he was. And that means every kind of moral evil that can be thought of, that can be done. Jesus bore all those sins on the cross for mankind to be saved and set free from the bondage of sin. Sin is bondage. Yes, it is. When, when I was praying, when my mother was sick, she ended up with Alzheimer's. Do you know the worst thing that a child can experience is to watch mama not know you? That's right. To watch mama not know you? And, 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 it, and it's, it's hurtful, but if you don't know the Lord, if you don't know, if you don't know him, if you don't know how to pray, if you don't know how to get on your knees, if you don't know how to fast, if you don't know how to cry out to him, you won't be able to handle it mentally because the battle is, is the mind. It, 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 will, it will take you to a level that no one wants to understand because that's mama or if that's daddy. You don't understand. It, it's hard to deal with those type things. To deal with a child that comes into this world with birth defects. You know, the family has to be strong. Yes. Yes. And do you even think about the mother? My God. My God. Because God created man and woman. Man has the seed, woman has the, the egg, she overlays it, that baby, she's carrying that baby, and then when it's time for that baby to come into this world, you expect a healthy, normal child, but when it doesn't happen, what do you do? Do you get angry with God? And the answer is yes. 
masculine is yes. And it's hard because you know what? If God brought him here, he's going to take care of him. That's why Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross for us. That we don't have to be burdened down with those things and have it in control of our minds. He's going to take care of the child. Now, I think about Juwan and how he came into the world. I said, because Juwan can't give his testimony, I want to give it. <laughs> and Juwan came into this world. The mother had asthma. She had no oxygen. The baby head was bumped on as he was coming out of the head. The baby came out gray and lifeless. Do you know what it is to see your baby come out gray and lifeless and not crying, not moving? But as they worked on it, I was there and I was about to say, Lord, and he just told me to hush. But when they got him breathing, and they started jumping and screaming, thank you, Lord, he's breathing. Going to the intensive care unit, the mother just looking. She's, she's there with a blood pressure of 270, over 150. And they kept, can you feel this? Can you, can you talk to me? Can you tell me the name? And all of this is going on. And thank God I listened when the Holy Spirit said, hush. In other words, hush. I don't need no noise in my battles. My battles, I don't want no noise. You don't say anything until I tell you to. There he was. Needles in his head, needles in his arms, on a respirator. And you see that boy, when they took him through the door, his hands went up in there. He's been praising God. I am here to tell you that we need to learn God, Jesus, and how he bared the cross for us. And when I think about it, it brings tears to my eyes. And I'm, because sometimes we can get selfish. And it's all about me and what I want and what I want to do. And why can't I have looking at what someone else has? You don't need what they have. You need what God has for you. And I look at him now. All he wants to talk about is preaching. All he wants to do is hear the word. And that's when God showed me. He said, you got to stay in my word. You can't come out of it. You can't come out of it. The minute you come out of it, you start falling away. You can't be rooted and grounded in me. You, I, I've made a way for you. made a way for us to be free from the bondage of sin. He showed me me and I was just spending and spending and everything changed in my prayer. And I could see him cutting the chains off of me. Now if he cut the chains off of me, I have no, no right to be back in him. Unless I want to be. But every time something comes up trying to pull me back into what I used to do in the past that he told me he doesn't remember anymore. So, you know, you have people who come up and tell you about your past. You know what he, he showed me, tell them, thank God I don't do that anymore. His wounds. Jesus was wounded. We are healed. We're mended. So those inner hurts have to be healed. And your relationship with him needs to be healed in order for whatever sickness 
so if disease or whatever tries to come your way, he can't take control. He's already done it. He did it on the cross. And you have to believe it. Because if you receive it, then you got it. He didn't give it to you. Thank you, Jesus. Spiritually, emotionally, and physically healthy is what he did for us. That's what his word does for us. So he, he's showing me I need to stay in this so I can understand exactly who he is and what he does for those he loves. And everyone that comes to him, he loves. He loves us. We need the Holy Spirit for the power of God to work in us. And it comes through Jesus Christ and what he paid on the cross for us. That we will live and not die. He keeps us from heartaches and pains and sufferings and shames. Even though you might be, be broken. But not forgotten. Battered. But not bruised. For with life comes scars and wounds. But remember he was wounded. For our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities and by his stripes, we are truly healed. As believers of God, we must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his righteousness, his way of doing things, the right way. And you know what? You can say what you want, but you know right from wrong. And all these material things that you want, shall be added to you. That he'll add them. You, you, don't, you don't have to worry about money. He showed me long ago. He said, look at the money. And what is on your money? Do you know what is written on your money? In God we trust. In God we trust. So your money is blessed. If you got a pity, you're blessed. Your money is blessed. You'll never be broke. Thank God for the money. Thank God for the pity. Pennies turn into dollars. So you're never broke. Oh, I'm broke. I don't have. But you go out and get what you want. But can you? Thank God enough to give him that 10% in obedience that he asked you for because he don't need the money, he made the money. But you can't do that. Oh, I'm broke. Oh, I'm not giving my money to that church. I'm not giving my money to that pastor. You're not giving him anything. God takes care of him every day. And God will take care of you every day, every minute, every hour. You only have to say thank you, Lord. Sometimes we act like we're God. I want this and I want that. And you didn't do this and you didn't do that. He didn't have to wake you up this morning, but he did. Because of his graciousness, because of his mercy, because of his kindness. Because of his love, because of his gentleness. He gives you his knowledge and his wisdom, his understanding. And you can't even tell him thank you. You can't even give him a pin. But yet you want him to constantly give you. You're unappreciative. Ungrateful, selfish, stubborn, bitter, hateful, and wicked and evil. That you can't give God a thank you. It's because of Him that you can speak. Do you know how to pray? Do you know how to pray? For when God guides, he will provide for his children, 
because sometimes we do get ungrateful, yeah. selfish. Yeah. And if you think about the fact that you're alive, yeah. that you can go where you want to go, and how much he truly loves you, God said all you have to do is praise him. So God says he wants the church to stand on your feet that you can stand on because some don't have any. And give God praise.
and you're blaming everybody else. Yes. Yeah. When you need to dig deeper. Yes. Yes. Yourself. Yes. Yes. And the problem that we have, and, I, and I'm, I'm guilty too, the problem we have is, is that we give people too much power over our lives. Amen. Yes. That, that's, that's one of the things is, is that we feel like that we have to be accepted by everybody. We feel like that if you if you don't if you don't let me in your group, then then, then I'm, I'm I'm not gonna make it. But I want to tell you something. God said if they won't let you in, you start your own. <laughs> and that is the word of the Lord. We have to dig deep enough to, to realize to realize that you and God are the majority. Is there anybody in the house of the Lord this morning that will be honest enough to say I'm, I'm dealing with some hurts and the woman of God just was tapping all over my life today because the only thing I done was covered it up and kept going. But after 30 years I'm still upset. I still deal with some stuff that happened as a child. I'm a child and it's some stuff that happened to me that I, I don't even know how to deal with it. I don't even know how to express it. And I want to invite every one of you that, that are feeling any of those things that this woman of God has declared to us today. I want to let you know that the altar is open. And you can come. And you can lay those burdens down. You can say, God, I don't want to keep carrying this stuff because it's causing some things. It's causing me to miss the fullness of what you really want me to have because a lot of my decisions that I made are because of the things that happened to me. Thank you. 
Father God, for the word that you sent forth for me. And I thank you, Father God, that it even helped me. And for whatever each and every one of these people need at this altar. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, that everything that they need that inner healing for, whether it is physical, mental, or emotional, Lord God Almighty, that it is done. And I thank you, Father God, that your word will not return to the Lord. I pray, Father God, that you move those blocks that are binding us up in unforgiveness. And the hurts and the pains, Lord God Almighty, as I speak, I thank you that whatever is deep rooted, that it is being mended in them today because you are love. And Lord, I thank you that it will not hurt, it will not bother, it will not lose sleep over it anymore. It will not wake them up at night, Lord. But you will wake them up singing hymns and songs and spiritual songs and letting them know that you love them, Lord God Almighty. And for those who are standing for loved ones, for her, I thank you, Father God, that you've already touched them. Touch their hearts for being that loving that they want to stand in the midst of someone else. And there's your love inside of them. And I pray that you will continue to make it grow, Lord God. And I thank you for each and every one of them. Thank you, Father God, for the pastor and his wife and all the ministers, for the ushers, for the congregation, for the musician. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the choir, for those that love to sing your praises. And I thank you, Father God, that every hurt and every pain this day will be removed in Jesus' name. Amen.
grab your things for us. Let's get you in charge at this time.
glad that you're here and you want to stay and, we, and have something to say. We're definitely glad to hear from you. Amen. Amen.
you're doing still never go unnoticed and I'm grateful for the church family and the things that you do that you don't have to do but thank you so much for being with us on Friday night and I'm thanking you already in advance for those of you that are going with us this afternoon uh, to St. James in Maysville as a pastor appreciation I've never met the pastor before, but you know, if, if a person is doing the work of God, then they're my sister, they're my brother, and so we thank God that we're going to go there with the, in the in the power of God and in the love of Jesus Christ. And I don't know exactly what time we're leaving, but uh, uh, 1.30, that they give everybody time to get something to eat, come back. So the bus will leave here around 1.30 this afternoon for those of you that want to go along with us. If you've never been to Maysville, this would be a good time to get on the bus and see where it's at. Amen. And, and, and help us as we lift up the name of Jesus. Let's thank God for these great men who have so many and I owe them always as they always do. We thank God for our uh, Mother Evans, it's so good to have you back in the house. We miss you. Brother Bennett, we thank God for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brother Sue, we thank God for you. Here, these are states and states women that have been, been here as long and, and Minister Wheeler has been here longer than anybody else around this Amen. church. And so we thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. Just want, want us to continue to, to just remember that God is great and He's greatly to be praised. Yeah. And as the word of God has told us today, he was wounded for our transgression. He was wounded for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Uh, one other thing, last last point, uh, congratulations to Sister Zaya and the Harvard family who are the, the uh, champions for the high school football league. <laughs> They, they, they didn't lose in the conference, so they're the conference champs. So oh, now they get to go on and knock off some more folk and hopefully right. be the state champs this year. Yeah. And is yeah. uh, on the dance team, and so she's dancing, and they playing, and they doing what they do. Yeah. <laughs> With all of that being said, is there anything we miss anything before we get ready to go? Um, <clears throat> Sister Rita had some 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 gifts out today. Tomorrow, next Sunday. Oh, some Just gifts Sunday. on next Sunday. She want to make sure that everybody uh, receive again on next Sunday. Uh, peak out where we're, we're uh, breast cancer because we know that we have some people right in this church who have faced that situation and thank God that God is is healed their body. And so we thank God. A young man that I went to went to college with. Uh, we were in college in junior college, and then we were here at UNCW together. Uh, he he was in, he was in love with his girlfriend all the way from when we was in school in Florida. He would he would just take money and put it in the pay in the in the, in the pay phone and just and call and talk for hours. And then he, when he graduated from UNCW, he went back home. And they got married. I don't think I, I don't know how long they were married. But his wife uh, came up with breast cancer, oh, mm. and they had two small young children. Oh, my God. And she left this world. My God. Oh, my God. So please make sure you 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 get the exams. Make sure that you stay oh, yeah. on top of the things yeah. that need to be stayed on top of, because because if it's called early, things can be done and taken care of. But I I, I just want somebody to know you don't have to be old. No. And you don't have to be female. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. So we are gonna close it now. Would you stay? And we're gonna we're gonna give that the one we've got is gonna close us out as we get ready to go, and she will have the final words at this time. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you peace. 
In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.